Hey now, everybody, it is Future Track from Post Editing. There was an issue with the audio on this show. For some reason, Saba's audio was super, super low. It was not this way when we recorded. I tried to fix it as much as I could in post. Uh, there is some sections where it drops out completely. I wanted to get this episode out, so I apologize. It's going to be a little hard to listen to in a couple points. I said I did as much as I could post editing to try to fix it. On with the show. Hey now, everybody. Welcome to DDO Players News, where we talk about the latest from the world of Dungeons & Dragons Online, the tabletop, and beyond. I am your host, Drac. For today's show, I am joined by friend of the show, a special guest. We haven't had her on for a long time. We've missed her. We've missed the damsels. It's Saba Jade. Hey, everybody. It is Saba from the damsels. Well, it used to be the damsels of DDO. Now you're just the damsels game. We are the damsels game. So what have you guys been up to? Let's let's just get that out of the way before we get into the fun part of the show. What has the damsels been up to lately? Um, well, not DDO. I don't <laughs> think they have it installed anymore. I, you know, I didn't figure that was going to be the case. Yep. So, um, we do other games. You guys do a lot of other games. I talk about one of them in what I've been doing. Ooh. Um, and then um, they do a lot. We do a lot of other games. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> but we don't record them all. We just play them a lot. So I'm only allowed to talk about one. So I'm just gonna talk about the one that we've been. Doing. <laughs> well, okay. There's a note down below. I'm only allowed to talk about one. Oh well, spoilers, I guess, for later. Stay tuned for that. But you just wrapped up uh, something that was pretty amazing. You were doing a video series that we will I will link in the show notes. You were doing a DDO quest a day. And you did a lot of videos in a row. And I commend you for that. I couldn't do it, I don't think. Well... That's why I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see why. Because that was a lot of work, I'm sure. Oh, it was a thousand days in a row that I put out a video. A thousand days in a row. That is insane, girl. A thousand videos in a row. Well, good for you, though. I so, don't think I, I could don't do know it. What I'll do next. Well, it's not like every every day I put out a video, but it's not like I recorded every day. Anyway. Right, but still, I mean, you had to actually play the quest, then you had to, like, edit them, do the video, upload the video. I mean, that's a lot of work for a thousand days in a row, so good on you. But yeah, I said, I will link that in the show notes, and we can talk more about uh, the damsels later. But we do have some game news and it has to do with Lamania. It was just up. Uh, It is now down. There was a content creator press preview that uh, Sab and I both took part in. Uh, She has some awesome videos, which we will link in the show notes as well. Uh, You can pretend to watch my awesome videos that I made. Uh, They are lost to time, though. Uh, They got corrupted somehow. I'm not exactly sure what happened. But uh, anyway, so pretend you watched my awesome videos and then go watch Saba's videos as we talk about what's coming To DDO, and that is the new race, and it's going to be the Aladrin. Uh, Raise your hands if you're shocked it's the Aladrin. Nobody is probably raising their hand right now if you're familiar with the lore, because it ties very much in to the new upcoming expansion pack. There was. It was was quite interesting, some of the guesses that, that people were throwing out, and I'm like... I can see that. I can see that as well. Uh, but yeah, the Aladrin, they are a Feywild denizen. They're attuned to seasonal magic. They are Fey creatures in the form of elves. Uh, mechanically, they are uh, an element, elemental generalist. 
uh, great at most forms of combat and with their ability to specialize into seasonal abilities to further customize their combat prowess. Uh, the Iconic, which there is going to be one of those for the expansion as well. It's going to be the Wild Mage Sorcerer. We will talk about that in a second. Uh, you get in plus two to your dexterity. Uh, you have immunity to sleep spells and effects. Uh, you gain a plus two saving throw bonus against uh, enhancement spells and effects. You also have a plus two racial bonus to your listen, search, and spot. Uh, then you also get what they're calling it seasonal affinities. At level one, gain access to four seasonal feats. These operate uh, as passive toggles that grant bonuses uh, you may switch. So you can do a spring affinity, which is one or plus one to charisma, summer plus one to strength, autumn plus one to wisdom, and uh, plus one to intelligence is the winner affinity. Uh, the racial past lives will be a plus one to listen, a plus one to dexterity for the second, and then the third will be a plus one racial action point. Uh, so what do you think of this? Because I know you um, hopped on that um, preview as well. Check this out on the Mania. So what do you think overall? Well, when making the character, I really liked the looks of them. They did a great job in the art department. Um and then playing them, I thought they were cool. Um, I did, for the Elad straight up Eladrin, the heroic version, I did just um, a fighter, a paladin. Um, and I wanted to see how that worked out. And it was fine. And then I also did a bow user. I did. that was fine too. I, I did a ranger and then I did a rogue for mine, which of course people will know where to see, but yeah. Um, it's because the, I figured that would make sense with the bonuses that you get. Yep. And then I did a, the wild mage to see what the wild magic would look like. Mm -hmm. Because you get bonus, as you do magic, wild surges happen all over the place. And that was really cool. Because you can have good wild searches and bad wild searches. And so I did a video of one at 15 and her at 32. And um, when I was 15, I was so into looking at what was going on that I almost killed myself because I wasn't paying attention to the battle. I was paying attention to <laughs> right. what surges were going on. Right. It's like, yeah. oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh, wait. Exactly. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let me pay attention to my health here. <laughs> yep. And I was just on normal. So, so much was going on. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I think. Yeah, I, I thought so too. I, I enjoyed just a little bit that I uh, played with uh, the, the Aladdin. I didn't, um, do, I just did like a normal, I think I started at seven. I didn't like do anything past that. So I, I, I kind of looked at the trees. I uh, didn't, you know, mess with them or I didn't actually, you know, get to a higher level to where I could actually put a bunch of points into the trees. I had a couple points too. Um list but uh we can go over the trees a little bit of course this is on the mania so keep that in mind this they may they oh were on monday yes um by friday they already changed some of the trees oh did they i didn't see that they even changed the trees i don't know if the notes i'm looking at on don't know if these are updated or not then probably not if they changed some stuff do, do you know what they changed um in the Chaos Mancer, the Iconic, the spells at Tier 4, they swap some of those out. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second here then. But uh, we'll just kind of quickly go over this. I got these linked. Uh, the Lamania notes are linked in the show notes. So, like I said, we're not going to go over all these because Lamania, sub change, yada, yada, yada. When it's actually final... Um, and on live, we'll go ahead and talk about, you know, all these in depth. But uh, the uh, core of the enhancement tree is uh, plus two to hit with all your attacks. And also your point blink shot and range sneak attack range will be increased by two meters for each core ability you possess in the tree. Plus one to dexterity, uh, dex dexterity intelligence, or charisma. 
Then you get Elven Accuracy 2, which is plus 2 to hit with all attacks. Uh, then again, plus 1 Dexterity, Intelligence, and Charisma. And then uh, Elven Accuracy 3 will be another plus 2 to hit with all attacks. So I can see this is going to be, to me, this is going to be a very uh, like melee ranged type character. I would think so, but I could also see people doing spellcasters with these, though, too. Um, cause yeah, that's they, why I went with the, the melee, the paladin first, and then yeah. I tried the throw, because it could go either way. And I think it'll be exciting for a sneak attack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which I might actually build, because I haven't built one of the, like, a sneak character like that for a while but yeah this is um definitely something i might look into uh your tier one uh nothing is hidden then you get uh, keen senses plus one two three to search spot listen that comes from the l uh face step you can disappear and reappear some distance ahead you start with two charges per rest cooldown is going to be 10 seconds on that uh based on your season your affinity in your season, uh, there is an additional effect. If you're in spring, you'll gain a temporary plus 20 bonus to dodge, plus 1% per two character levels for 10 seconds. In summer, a plus 3 to your weapon damage. Autumn, plus 3 to your sneak attack. And winter, plus 3 to your tactics DCs. Look at the autumn. It's plus 3 sneak attack dice right now if they don't change it. It's sneak attack dice and plus more one more dice per three character. Per, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of dice. That's a lot of dice. <laughs> yeah. The cooldown is 10 seconds and it goes for 10 seconds. So pounding that thing. And oh, yeah. Sneak attack dice. Oh, yeah, you could. And then especially if you build. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of excited to do a sneak character with this, I think. Yeah. Uh, also, something called Step Through the Fade. Uh, one, two, and three charges of Face Step. This does require Face Step, uh, Sideways Prereq, and Arcane Fluidity. Uh, 5, 10, 15% Arcane Spell Failure. That also comes from the L. <clears throat> uh, like I said, show notes will have the link to all this. Um, trying to see if there's just anything else. Uh, if you get up into the tier four, uh, you can get some uh, SLAs uh, like lesser vigor for. That's when they change greater vigor. Yeah. Um, on by Friday they changed that to a greater. Vigor. Oh, it's greater now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like the I said. Number one, they changed um, spell. To, um, it was long strider, but apparently yeah, they it's changed not that. Strider. Okay. Long strider. It's some kind of fire spell. Okay. And then plus three double strike, plus three double shot, plus three dodge, and bypass three percent of enemy dodge. Uh, Autumn spell, if they haven't changed that, um, is Night Shield as an SLA. Yeah, and then Winter spell is an SLA for Blur. So yep. th there's some pretty good SLAs there, too. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this, actually. I have a couple ideas for some new characters to make, possibly with the Aladrin. And then along with that, uh, we got your Iconic, which you kind of talked about a little bit. And that is the uh, Aladrin Chaos Mancer. Uh, you get uh, your first level uh, is a Wild Mage Sorcerer. In this, and then it's plus two dexterity. You got Fey Ancestry, so you have immunity to sleep, uh, which is basically the same as the Aladrin. Uh, then you are a wild magic Fey. Your Fey nature grants you wild magic. When you cast spells, you have a small chance to have an additional strange effect occur around you. These effects vary greatly from very helpful too dangerous to just silly it grants a plus five chance of gaining a wild surge every time you cast a spell wild surges will also manifest over time passively wild surges uh, will not occur in a public space of course and then uh just like the regular aladrin uh, you're going to get your seasonal affinities uh, they look like they're the same. Charisma, Strength, Wisdom, Intelligence, depending if you pick Spring, Summer, Autumn, or Winter. 
Uh, so what would you think of this? I messed with the iconic a little bit. I didn't. I spent more time in the Aladrin than I did the the iconic. Actually, I think. Yeah, this is the one that I did at fifteen, and then I okay. did at thirty two. And um, when I was thirty two, I went out and did Wild Thing. Okay. And a surge happened, and I swear this happened. Um, and I had you know a party of hirelings and everything. And right. A message said, um, "Death comes to all," or something to that effect, and it killed a dinosaur. One of the wild <laughs> surges. Really? Yeah. And I was wondering. I had the bad ones available too, because in the um, class enhancement for the the wild mage, um, you can make it where you get rid of the bo- bad surges, or you can keep them if you want to. Okay. So, Kept them because I wanted to see what bad things could happen. Right. Um, so does that mean it could have killed somebody in my party or not? I don't know. That would be amazing if so. <laughs> I don't know. And but, very crappy on a hardcore leak, but you know, yeah, you take the yeah, chance. And I like the um the graphics on your screen when surges happen too. It looks kind of cool. Uh, the I can First time I saw it actually was on your video. Um, so I you definitely noticed that things are. Happening. Oh yeah, yeah. You you can definitely sell because I because the first time it happened, I was like, "What was that?" Yep. Then I'm like, "Oh, that was the surge." Gotcha. So they explained that um, in um, Myth Drainer when there are going to be areas that surges are going to happen. Mm-hmm. Plus casters are going to be able to have this happen. So we could just be regular characters and go into areas and wild searches are going to happen. So you and I could take our just regular rogues into an area and wild searches might happen to us. Which without is... Without having one of these right monsters. Which is kind of cool actually. It That's... And it's very, I mean, if you know anything about the lore of Mithrainer, it that makes sense. Um, lore-wise, that I can see why they're doing it. It totally makes sense. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's, I'm, you know, I might try one of these two. I, I usually don't play casters, but this oh, might. Yeah, fun past lives. Yeah, because this might actually make me either create just an iconic or maybe do a reincarnation into one or something, but I'm kind of curious because I would like to see like maybe, yeah, I don't know. I, I would just like to see and play with these surges and see. Well, I have to go through and get my Elagium racial flies out of the way. Oh, true. And then um, have to do iconic past lives. So that's six. And then archetype eventually. I have barely done any archetypes. So those will be last. But I'll do Wild Mage in there somewhere. And then the, uh, speaking of those past lives for this, the iconic past life, uh, your passive, you get a plus three universal spell power per stack of this past life for a maximum of plus nine universal spell power. Uh, for those wondering what the iconic uh, past life is on this one. So yeah, so there you go. There, like I said, Lamania was up uh, throughout the week. It's now down. I would assume there would be another Lamania. Uh, maybe. I can't remember if they said there was going to be. Yeah, I don't think they said. But just judging, but I'm trying to think when Isla Dread, I'm trying to think of how, how many Lamanias we got. Because Isla Dread would have been the last expansion pack that came out. So I'm trying to think of how many Lamanias we got before that came out. I want to say there was three Lamanias for Dread, maybe? I don't I know. I usually don't I can't remember. do Lamania except to test out builds and stuff. So this is just up my alley. Um, right. Oh, yeah. And that's, I don't quest or anything like that because I want to be surprised. Yeah, I usually <laughs> don't either. Um, I will go on Lamania to test, you know, stuff like new stuff like this, like a new race or a new 
Uh, if they added in, you know, when they did like the changes to the Ranger double shot and stuff like that, I was like, okay, let's let's check this out. But yeah, Quest, I tend not to do Quest either because, you know, like you, I I, I want to see him live for the first time and be like, oh my god, this is awesome, or oh my god, what are they doing with this? <laughs> yeah, depending what the case may be. But as <sighs> usual, some people are gonna really like these and some people are going to hate them yeah that's how everything is well please everybody can't make everybody hate everybody. I, I mean people are different hundred percent right there uh so yeah so uh, like i said i will link your videos uh in the show notes uh since uh mine disappeared yeah i have no idea i did uh my videos and then after i got done i went to edit them and as soon as i imported them into my video editor poof they went away and i couldn't recover them so i don't know Ooh. what <laughs> exactly happened i think it was an obs problem with my video card but uh i tested it after that and it worked fine so i don't know it's just one of those weird things but uh thankfully we have your videos and then um if i remember right i'll try to link uh some other people's videos because basically anybody that's in the ddo community that either streams or does youtube videos uh everybody had videos on this uh which is basically the whole point of having the little preview the day before it went public so um i will try to link they were yeah there was a lot of twitch i after i got done uh with with my videos i i kind of hopped on twitch and was looking and i was surprised at how many people were doing twitch of, of it it was kind of awesome to see because i mean you know there's there's a pretty decent ddo community on on twitch but that night there was a lot of people streaming ddo which was yeah. pretty amazing to see so all right uh anything else you want to add about the aladrin and the i'm just i'm happy with it yeah um i am too just from the little bit that i see and i'm excited to see and of course uh you know it'll change probably before it goes live so uh we will talk about it if there's another Lania, we'll talk about that and if not we'll talk about the notes when it goes live all right we've got uh, store sales going on right now and the uh store sales this time around kicks off the summer sales which happens every summer if you did not know uh each week you're gonna get some deals uh this one through july 11th you're gonna get 35 percent off all tiers of the mechanized patron coffer that is through june 13th so if you want to get um, mechanized patron copper which was the copper that came out not too long ago we talked about it on the show and then you know they say they may or may not come back hint they usually do it's usually with sales like this. Not always, though, but usually. So if you want to get in on this, uh, 35% off, which is pretty good sale, especially for something fairly new, too. Uh, then you can get the Tools of the Trade, 30% off your Augment Bags, your Select Augments, Jewelers and Sentient Toolkits, and the Green Steel Extractors. That is through June 13th as well. Does anybody still do Green Steel stuff at all? Um, sure, some people do. Do they? Okay, I just didn't figure that would be a thing anymore. I was just surprised when I seen this on sale. I'm like, I didn't. I figured that would be so so old it really wouldn't be uh, worth. You can also get bone pickers. I think are on sale. As well. Oh, are they? Okay, that's that makes more sense than the green steel, but. I'm just impressed people are still doing green steel. Um, that is through June 13th, of course, in the DDO store. And we got a weekly coupon code, free potion of superior efficiency uh, times five. Uh, coupon code for that is spell power, just like it sounds. S-P-E-L-L-P-O-W-E-R for five um, potions of superior efficiency. Uh, also conveniently through June 13th. And that wraps up the game news for DDO. We will hop into the tabletop.
as we do have a little bit of tabletop news. Uh, the One of the big stories of the week in tabletop was Talisman is getting a fifth edition. Uh, have you ever played Talisman? No. I am surprised at that. I figured for sure you would have played this. No. That, that really surprises me. But yes, a new edition of Talisman. If you are not familiar, Talisman is a very classic board game. It is for two to six players or more if you have expansions. Uh, please note, if you add expansions to it, uh, the playtime for the game drags way, way, way out. That's kind of the problem with Talisman. It's a very long game. Uh, well, that's like you said two to six players. Who am I going to play with? Well, true. But there is a computerized version, so you you could play the video game. Just saying. Uh, um, let's see. You choose characters like a warrior, wizard, a prophetess, a troll, uh, and there's many others, especially the expansions. Adam, uh, you, it's a... At its core, it's a roll and move game, actually, because that's kind of of its time. You move around the board, you're encountering enemies, you're encountering allies, you level up, you find loot, you cast spells, you're adventuring around this board usually it's 60 to 90 minutes but expansions kind of add on to that and if you play with people that um have ap really bad um that could turn into two three hours easily um but yes so fifth edition of the game is coming out from Avalon Hill. Uh, they are taking it over from Games Workshop. Well, actually, they're kind of it was it was kind of weird how the press release said it. Uh, Avalon Hill is now publishing and taking the game over, but they're going to work with Games Workshop on it. So technically, Games Workshop still owns the IP. They're just kind of working in conjunction with Avalon Hill. Uh, the fifth edition is going to have all new artwork, redesign um, miniature figures, uh, revised rule book which really needed it because the rule book was horrible a uh, streamlined and accessible gameplay for both newcomers and fans alike players are going to choose from 12 detailed characters uh each uh mini is going to have matching cards that are going to reveal the unique abilities you have the board which depicts the lands of talisman with the three legions our regions uh will be like an all-new board as well with, with new graphics uh, it's going to come out uh this summer uh i.e i'm guessing a Gen Con. They didn't say that, but my guess would be it's going to be Gen Con or soon after. $59.99 is the MSRP 2-6 to six players, 12 and up. So there you go, 5th edition of Talisman. I know a lot of people are excited about it. I, I mean... I, I like Talisman okay. It's like, I wasn't like jumping up and down about this fifth edition, but uh, it's been a while since we had a new edition of it. Uh, last one was released back in uh, 2007. So it's been quite a while, but there you go. And then I did, didn't get a post up on the site about this, but uh, the digital adaptation of this video game wise is going to get updated to the fifth edition as well. So if you have that, uh, you'll get the update for free. If not, you can buy the fifth edition. So there you have it. Talisman coming from Avalon Hill. And then Free League Publishing has announced that Mutant Year Zero Zone Wars is now in retail stores. This is following the successful kiss Kickstarter of Mutant Year Zero Zone Wars. This is a miniature skirmish game set in the world of the popular role-playing game Mutant Year Zero. Uh, it is uh, has a MSRP of $69.99. Uh, you are going to lead a band of mutant strikers into the zone and fight others to scavenge artifacts from the ancient zone wars in a fast and furious game of tabletop skirmishes in, uh, as I said, the beloved Mutant Year Zero universe. Uh, this is uh, designed to play up to four players. E the miniatures are 32 millimeter in size, uh, no assembly. They are already assembled, non-painted. Of course, uh, they are sun-dropped, though, so if you want to paint them, they should be ready to go right out of the box because they do have the sun drop on them. Uh, so we will be doing an unboxing video and review and possibly a gameplay video. I can figure out how to make that work logistically. Uh, definitely an unboxing video coming up. 
uh, this, though, because uh, our friends over at Free League Publishing did send me the core set and the expansion set uh, for this to take a look at. So that is coming to the site soon. And like I said, hopefully, knock on wood, we'll get a gameplay video as well if I can figure out uh, how to do that. I think it's going to work, though, because um, I did invest in an overhead mount for my camera to make unboxing videos better. So I should be able to use that overhead mount for gameplay videos. So if I can talk my friends into doing a gameplay video, we might have gameplay of this and other gameplay coming to the site soon. But there you go, Mutant Year Zero, Free League Publishing out now. Uh, let's take a look on the screen. of might be something you might be interested in. I kind of thought about you when I got this press release. And I'm like, I'm glad you're on the show this week. There's a new survival game coming out. It's called Dawn of Defiance. This, yes, yes we do. And this one, I kind of think would might be right up your alley too, because it's set in the world of Greek myths. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I figured. Demos are nice, people. <laughs> Uh, it, this is from an independent, independent video game studio called Trega Entertainment. They announced this during uh, IGN Live uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. This is an open-world survival crafting game inspired by ancient Greek mythology. It's going to go early access, uh, like most of these survival crafting games do, over on Steam and the Epic Game Stores both. You are the defier. You are subjected to the mythical plot across the ruined isles ascend from a weak soldier to a godlike anti-hero as you survive the crossroads build impressive greek structures and prove yourself a champion of defiance gather your resources craft and upgrade your gear face down the trials of the gods with up to three friends so basically think of any of your open world survival games but set it with greek gods and mythology and that's what you get uh, so I'm pretty excited about this, actually. Uh, you can wish list it now on both Steam and the Epic Game Store. As I said, uh, early access launches on August 15th. Uh, more information uh, over on the website. There is a link to the website. It's basically down at defiance.com. Uh, first time I heard about this is when I got this press release, actually. But uh, I'm excited because I love survival crafting games. Thanks, thanks to the damsels, actually. You you are the reason why I like those because you had me play many of them and we played many together and it's just I don't know they're just always super fun especially with playing with you so well you know they're coming out with seven days to die one point oh very soon I know they are and I was gonna talk to you all about that because I might bring the server back for that so <laughs> stay tuned yeah stay tuned we will talk about that. All right, and from on the screen, we're going to jump to a new segment to the show. I couldn't think of anything better to call it than From the Toy Chest. Uh, in this section, you know, we're going to talk about action figures, toys, anything like that. And what better way to kick off the inaugural from the toy chest with something near and dear to my heart, Universal Monsters. That's right, NECA. Uh, has put a dent in my wallet as they announced the 10th... Yes, I did pre-order this. The uh, 10th collection of their Toonie Terror figures. They are up for pre-sale now. These Universal Monsters Toonie Terrors are 6-inch action figures. Uh, each set comes with a stylized figures of the four main classic movie monsters as if they were a cartoon. So you're going to get the Werewolf, uh, which uh, features the likeness of Lon Chaney Jr., uh, Vampire Dracula, of course, Bela Lugosi, The Mummy, and Dr. Frankenstein's Monster, of course, stylized as 
Boris Karlov. Uh, if you're watching the YouTube video, we got a picture of these. These look just amazing. And I had to get these. Dang it, NECA, what are you doing to me? Uh, they are non-articulated uh, art action figures, uh, fully licensed, of course, by Universal Pictures. And they measure approximately about 15.2 centimeter size, so just about six inches tall. Each figure comes with an individual blister packaging with themed backdrops as a bonus. Uh, they are up for pre-order now, as I said, over on NECA Online. Uh, the set of four figures, uh, $59.96 is the MSRP on them. Alex like said, you're seeing, uh, if you're watching the YouTube version, you're seeing uh, pictures of this on the screen. If not, go over to the show notes uh, for this link to check these out. But yeah, these are awesome. Um, you know, I, I'm a sucker for the Universal Monsters, so had to get this because I have quite the Universal Monsters collection of various things. Um, lots of action figures, but just other various nicks and knacks of Universal Monsters. So as soon as I got this press release, I'm like, ah, sigh. Here we go again. So my... It's funny. I am paring down on stuff. You're just... <laughs> you know, I say I was paring down. I did for a while. But yeah, it's not going so well for me. I keep seeing stuff and I really need to stop. But, you know, what are you going to do? And then I have all these board games and all these RPGs and all my vinyl. And yeah, yeah, I might need an intervention of some type. Well, I'm moving this time next week. I will be driving, and if it doesn't fit in the car, it doesn't go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I God, I wouldn't want to move again. Uh, w when I moved into where I am now, I swore I would never move again because that was a pain in the butt. So, yeah. So, you, you really are paring down then. You're not kidding. Yeah. So, if it doesn't fit in the... I like that rule. If it doesn't fit in the car, it doesn't go. But I would be sad because I would lose a lot of my things <laughs> if that was my rule. <laughs> But, uh, I sent three boxes of media mail to my sister in Tennessee. That's all. Okay, well, good on you. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it yeah. at all. And um, the trunk is going to be full of my computer stuff. So at least uh, the back seat. Oh, it doesn't. Back seat, <laughs> okay. Doesn't. Well, there you go. Yeah, you are a you are just a better person than I. Because I'd be like, no. eh, eh, I I I can run a U-Haul. It'll be fine. <laughs> You're like, nope, nope, nope. Backseat or nothing. <laughs> I like it. What a roll. What a roll. All right, let's jump into our week in gaming. I will start. I uh, didn't do a lot this week. I had one of my busy, busy, crazy weeks. Uh, so all I really did was uh, some DDO with Beaker. This was over on the Cruising with Drac. That is the stream that we do. We tend to do it every Friday night. So far, we've been pretty good with doing it every Friday night. That's over on his uh, Twitch channel. I have linked uh, that in the show notes. So if you want to watch uh, the video of this one, you can watch it. We finished up uh, Ravenloft. We're doing uh, everything on Epic. Or Elite. I'm sorry. Elite, not Epic. Elite. Uh, we're... I think we both just hit 15 or maybe he hit 15 and I just hit 15. So we're kind of those those levels. And then we just started um, Giant Hold. We did the first two quests of that. Uh, what kind of uh, he is a he is like a monk of some type, and I am a dark hunter. Uh, and how many lives do you guys have? Uh, just one. Well, I think he. I am just on a single life. He might be. He might have reincarnated his, so he might have one past life. Okay. But I'm just a noob with like straight up. This was like a brand new character I created, so. I'm just a noob. Just a noob. I'm a noob. And you've seen me play DDO. You know how I play. I'm a noob. Uh, so as I said, the uh, link to watch that over. And then we, uh, as we're playing, we chat about uh, role-playing game news, game news, um, tabletop news, other weird geek movies. We just kind of chat, shoot, shoot the shit, as they say, and play DDO and just have fun. So check that out. Uh, once again, a link over in the show notes to uh, Beaker's uh, Twitch. Uh, like so we do this every Friday night. We usually start around 7.30 or 8 Eastern. We don't have any set time. And we usually play just a couple hours. So 
so check that out. And then the only other thing I did is um, Fallout 4. I'm playing that still. Uh, about maybe halfway through, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm farther into Fallout 4 now than the last time I played it and I quit, if that makes sense. It's kind of weird to say that, but... Because I had played Fallout 4 before, and then I, um, for some reason, just stopped playing it. But So I think so I might be halfway through it. We haven't talked about Fallout games. Is this your first Fallout game, or have you played uh, Oh, God, no. No, I, I played them all. All right. So which one's your favorite so far? Uh, New Vegas, hands down. Everybody loves New Vegas. Hands down, yeah. yeah. Hands down, New Vegas. Um, Fallout 3, close close to new vegas but hands down new Ve the the gameplay of new vegas is amazing the writing the story just yeah hands okay, so i agree with you there mm -hmm. except the beginning of fallout 4 i like better than the other. i did too i did, that's that was my favorite fart 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 part ugh, uh of fallout 4 i think was like the first probably half hour yeah it's the whole storyline of um her well mine's a female character of course. yeah um find you know losing your child yeah oh yeah it's like holy crap and like to see like spoilers if you haven't played fallout 4 but i mean it's old enough now where i really don't have to say spoilers but yeah it you know it depends if you're if you do the female or the male i mean either way it's the same thing you see your husband and our wife get killed in front of you <laughs> and then your child get kidnapped and then you're in this like crazy mutant wasteland and it's just like good grief yeah it oh yeah it's so good um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm to the point in fallout four now where it's annoying the heck out of me though, because it's where the whole base building thing starts in. And I hate that. I don't, that is not my, I do not like to base build. I don't, don't, don't enjoy it in any game. Uh, even in, in like the survival crafting games I play, I let other people do that. And I go out and scavenge and kill and. Yeah, I, d I don't do the whole base building thing. And that's luckily I did find out as I was uh, doing some research and stuff on uh, Fallout 4 and I watched a couple of videos. Uh, you actually really don't have to do that in like they make you they make it seem like you have to do that in Fallout 4. You kind of do a little bit just to advance the story, but then you can just like forget it and move on with your life and finish the game, which is what I'm going to do. Um, just not my, not my forte. I just don't. No. Do you do go around and do quests from all the factions or you just. Yes. Do... Yes. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Um, what I think what I'm doing this time, last time I just, I was like kind of doing just one faction this time I am doing them all. Um, I just, just got to the point to where, uh, the Brotherhood of Steel invited me to join. So I'm going to start doing their stuff. And then um, I am already joined the Minutemen. So I did a couple quests for them. So I'm going to do Brotherhood of Steel too. So yeah, um, I, I am going to do all of the factions this time. I'm going to try to do a, a complete as complete a playthrough as I can, I think. Uh, just because, like I said, last time I didn't do that, I only stuck with, I think think the brother brotherhood of steel i think last time is the one that i i did last time i i only did one faction but um i found out then again i thought you could only do one i found out no you can actually join all the factions all, yeah. yeah and do them all so that's what i'm doing i'm like yeah that'll be fun because then i can see you know different things and so yeah so that uh, was basically my week in gaming what about you well the Lomani a preview, and then um, I did my leveling with Zazo, and we went from 20 to 32 on our the ones we're leveling. He's his character is like 20 or 30 past lives. Holy crap! Mine has 125 past lives. What? Oh, 125? 
Yes. I'm I'm done. <laughs> no. Oh um, my so, god. Yeah, so my character is a Tabaxi Dragon Lord. His is a ranged character. So we're just zipping through, but we don't go nearly as fast as our friend Ben. So his character was 20 and we were like 25 or 26 and he goes, "Hey, you want to some help?" And we're like, "Sure." And we're out in um Giant Hold and he helps with one quest and then we just try and keep up. Honestly. Um remember he's 20 or 25 or 26. Right. And we try to keep up. So we enter a quest and he's already almost at the end. So we're just getting XP basically. And my goal is can I get to the end of the quest before the XP flashes? <laughs> That sounds super familiar to me, but I won't say why. I'm just going to leave it at that. Yep. So, um, <laughs> we, before we met up with Ven, we did Borderlands even store most of Giant Hold. And then with Ven, we did Three Barrel Code, Bonds, including the Raid, and all of Dolores. And by the time we were done that, we were 30, and then we just bounced to 32 because we were right. made it from 20 to 32 in the week. I just, I can't, 125 pounds, how? Oh, I'm a baby. How, <laughs> how, okay, how long has that taken you to get 125 past lives? Oh, a while. I yeah, just, I big. can't imagine. That is more dedication than I have. Good on you. Oh, it's a lot of fun, though. Sazo and I just chat about whatever. He's sad because... His hockey team lost in the playoffs last night, and I was happy because the Phils won yesterday. And right. Lost, you know, we chat whatever, stupid things. Right, yeah. And Ben joins us occasionally, like once a week or so, and then it's like, Ben has so many past lives and is capped out on Reaper points. Um, so we played with him one day. The next day, he came and said hi. And we're like, how many past lives have you had since we saw you yesterday? And he's like, well... And honestly, he went through two. Good grief. Exactly, good grief. Good <laughs> grief. Yeah, that is not me. He's just one of those... He's just that good. That is yeah. not me. That will never and, be me. And see, Zazo is way better than me. No matter what quest we go in... Does he outkills me? Everything, and I don't care about kill count, but he does. Well, I how much better than me Zazo is than then is ten times better than Zazo, and Zazo is a really good player. So that you can just imagine how good Ben is. I yeah, that is not no, <laughs> that is not me. <laughs> it, it's not me either, and uh. it's just fun watching him play. All right, and the other games we played, um, at, that I played, Liz, Lessa and Myth and I are playing Raft, which has been out forever, right? So we're going slowly through Raft. We just made it to this place called Angoroa, I think it's called. Um, and it's the city that is abandoned. Um, oh, I didn't, I thought you were just stuck in your Raft the whole time. I didn't realize it was like uh, cities and stuff. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a storyline. And when you go from, oh, they I send you to the, this one place, you get a, um, a radar and radio and everything, and they give you coordinates, and you plug these coordinates into your thing, and it'll send you to from place to place to place to place, and oh. to place, it gives you coordinates to the next place, and you meet people who tell you about, and you get notes, and it tells you about what happened to the world, so it tells you this whole storyline. So we made it to this place called. Tangaroa, and um, we we're so excited because we've been getting these recipes for these, um, this, these dishes to make for food, and they have bananas and strawberries. And on Tangaroa, we actually got banana trees and strawberry bushes, and now we can make these dishes with the bananas and the strawberries because we're growing them. Um, but we just left Tangaroa, and so we're gonna have to little break because I'm moving um, but they're gonna work on things while I'm gone um, 
but our raft kind of looks like a riverboat from the Mississippi. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, so we're having fun doing that. I don't think we have much longer to go. We already have the coordinates to the next place. Yeah, I had no idea there was that much in, involved with raft. I thought it was basically you were just on your little boat, your little raft, basically, and you were just floating around the ocean, and that's all you did. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a nice story. Huh. And yeah. It's a very relaxing game. And occasionally we come across something that wants to kill us, and we just surround it and poke it with our weapons that we've made. And we do okay because it's three of us comp- against one thing. Right. And usually, if we poke it, it attacks Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That seems about right. We have fun doing that. And then the only other thing um, I've been playing is um, Sunken Land with Myth. And it's one of those survival crafter games based on um, River World with Kevin Costner. Not River World. What's the name of it? Oh, um, Water World. Water World, yes, that one. Wow, they made a video game based oh, off of Water no, World? That's what we say. But oh, okay. There are little islands here and there and um, people trying to kill you. That seems like Water World. I mean, at least is it fun because that movie sucks so bad. I mean, at least is this like enjoyable? Well, um, it's a. I thought Myth would like it because you go scavenge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to go underwater to scavenge. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, and I'm digging it. You learn how to one of the um, uh, what do you call it? Um, words, yeah. Um, you learn how to build air tanks. It mm. lasts you like 10 seconds. <laughs> and then you run out of air. Wow. You have to hold your breath while you're underwater and scavenge and go up to the surface. That would be mildly terrifying. Yeah, exactly. So as you get different um, blueprints, you get better air tanks and that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, so we're just at the beginning. Making a base, and we're trying to build defenses so that the guys don't come and tear down our base. And eventually, we're going to get better weapons so that we can go to their place and get them to stop attacking us. You know? Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But we like it. That is one I haven't heard of. We and I am saying for the record, since you're here and this is going to be recorded, you, Lessa, and Myth, and I need to play games again. I miss playing games with you guys so bad. So we have to find a game yes. that we we can all play together again. So we are going to make that happen. All right. All right. We currently have 12 supporters over on our Patreon. If you would like to help support DDO players, simply go over to our donations page. You can help support the Players Alliance, which is the podcast network we are a part of. Your money is used for podcast hosting, website hosting, and to pay for the live shows, which the show is normally live, but this one was not. Normally, we are live, though. If you would like to donate without using Patreon every month, you can do that. Uh, several people have. We appreciate it. Just send me an email, drac at ddlplayers.com, and we can discuss how you can do that. Uh, you can also leave us a review over on any of the podcasting um, apps of your choice. This does help us out. Uh, the more reviews we get, the more we get pushed on said podcast app of your choice. If you do leave a review, let us know. I will go find it and we will read it on the air. We don't have any featured comments, but you can go over either to the YouTube version or the website version. Leave a comment. We'll feature them here. You can also send us an email if you would like. It's podcast at ddoplayers.com and uh, we will read that on the show as well. Oh, we do have uh, two live shows on the Players Alliance Network. Uh, the uh, Saturdays, 8.30 p.m. is Lotro Players News. And then DDO Players News, it varies day and time, depends on my schedule and uh, how bad my life is sucking at the moment. So no set time for the show, unfortunately. That's why these podcasts are very 
wildly different when they come out. It's my fault. I'm the problem. It's me. Join us for our live shows when we are live over at ddoplayers.com slash live. And that is going to wrap the show up. Uh, where can they follow you and the damsels? I want to put that in the show notes. Oh, we have a YouTube page. Where is it? Um, it's... I was going to look it up. <laughs> I should have did that before the show. This weird thing. I didn't know if you would remember it. I will link it in the show notes, though. I don't... I couldn't remember if it was just YouTube.com slash Daniel's Game or if it was no. some other weird thing. Okay. There we go. That weird thing that is in the show notes. You can follow the damsel's game. It, it'll be in the show notes. Yeah, it's one of those weird YouTube crazy long things but that will be in the show notes for the damsters you can watch all of their videos and then uh if you're on tiktok i know lessa post a lot of your gameplay videos over on tiktok which is yeah which is hilarious i i will link that as well because it's funny when that shows up in my fyp page on tiktok every once in a while it's like hey i know the person that made this video that's awesome so uh, then you can follow me uh, on Twitch if you want, though I don't Twitch that much. It's uh, Draculetta underscore 72 over on Twitch. I'm going to start Twitching more, and I might possibly Twitch some board game live plays too, since I invested in this overhead camera view. So we'll see. Fun things might be coming to uh, my Twitch soon. Stay tuned for that. All right, we are going to wrap the show up. Is there anything else you want to add, Samo? I like DDO. It's fun. It is fun. Well, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. It's been a while. I was gonna look, to, gonna look to see the last time you were on. It's been quite a while since I had you on. So always good to have you on. So we're gonna wrap the show up tonight with how I always do. I sure hope the RNG is much kinder to you than it always is to me.